Good rising, brethren. This is Big Judah coming to you guys from California. Before I begin, give all praise, most high Yahweh. Acknowledgement to the earthly mother. Who is wisdom? Who is the Holy Spirit? Acknowledgement to Yahweh Shai. I pray the most high blesses this lesson this evening. Gives more knowledge and understanding of the events of the past. In order to understand events that are currently happening on the earth. So you get a much better understanding of the things that are soon to come on the earth. Family, all of these so-called Christian Catholic churches have all been confederate with hiding the fact that they have been taking down the Israelites. They don't want the world to realize that they've been instrumental in putting the true people of the Most High under the curses. So you're going to see that that's why they only go to with 66 books. I have asked for years, just give me some kind of proof to show me the Most High said you can only read 66 books. The Most High only said to read 80 books. See, they've done this because the Bible stops around 70 AD. Then, supposedly, it just goes silent. And we're supposed to be, we're led to believe that no prophecies are going on right now. And that it's been like 2,000 plus years. And that now things are getting bad. And now that things are starting to go down for the other nations, they, they expect to be raptured up out of here. Now, supposedly, prophecy is supposed to pick back up because they've had their time of being on top. They've had their blessing. And instead of the fact that they, they know that there's a switch that's happening where they've been the head and the Most High is going to move them to be the tail. The Most High is going to move his people from being the tail back to the head. That's what's that's what has always been worked out. You, you know, it's just been a position. Sometimes we're at the top, sometimes we're at the bottom. But see, the other nations know this is their last time at the top. So they want to believe that they've been on top. They were able to set all the rules in their favor. They were able to do all the things they wanted to do. They were, you know, able to hide all of their dirt. And then they want the world to believe that if you just go along and, and agree with them and just follow their doctrine, that the Most High is going to be unfair to his people and just rapture his church up, the, the church, as they call it, of Catholicism and all the other Christian denominations. They're all just going to get raptured up. And then we're going to stay here and go through more, you know, horrible times with the Antichrist. Now, see, the Most High makes them go at each other and reveal things. See, they are all aware, these churches are aware that the things that the Roman Catholic Church and the Spaniards and the Portuguese and the Dutch and the English and all these other countries, they all know that their actions have been fulfilling prophecy. And they also know that all the stuff they're talking about today is not fulfilling prophecy. See, I was watching some guy, I'm not going to name any names, but he has a YouTube channel, a pretty big following, of course, you know, because he's spewing that Constantine Christian BS. But he was talking about how, you know, it's the end days because he's trying to witness to his family members. He's trying to witness to his friends and, and they laugh at him, you know, because he talks about the Jesus came and paid it all for you. And all you got to do is say Jesus and you'll, you know, be saved and you'll be able to go to heaven forever and you'll be able to get raptured away from everything. You know, all because, you know, all you have to do is just say Jesus. Now, does that make any sense that you're trying to push a whole love doctrine and all you got to do is just say one word and, you know, you'll get all your heart's desires and people are, that that's somehow because they're rejecting that, that storyline, that that's somehow persecution. See, it says like in the last days, you know, that his people are going to be persecuted for his namesake. So that's your idea of persecution. Someone laughing at you. 
someone rejecting your message, that's what you call persecution. See, because you're used to going around and just forcing people at the end of a sword or forcing people at the end of a gun to accept your religion. But now that you're not doing that anymore, now when people are just, you know, flat out just rejecting your message, now somehow that's you being persecuted. See, that just shows you that everyone wants the blessings, but no one wants the curses. Now, they're going to let you know right here in this commentary we're going to get into. It's called a commentary right here upon the historical books of the Old Testament. All right, here, right, Reverend Father in God, Dr. Simon Patrick, okay? This guy's in England, okay? So he's going to let you know, or we're going to go just straight to Deuteronomy 28 and 68 and check out his commentary. But you're going to see that they're re they realize that the Israelites have been you know, in a lower state for a very long time. This, these prophecies go on for a long time. See, I've talked to people, and they're, they're trying to say, well, it says Egypt. They're going to go back to Egypt. So, you know, like very, very simple understanding. Like, oh, they've got to go back to the land of Egypt. That, that's, that's what that prophecy means. I'm like, dude, are you really that, <laughs> that shallow? But maybe they are. I don't know. But, you know, we're going to take a look at this guy's commentary. Just, just to let you know that they're well aware of the events that happened after 70 AD were fulfilling prophecy. But they want to, you know, they give you that whole 400 years uh, between the Old Testament and the New Testament was a 400 years of silence, which is totally not true. It was when the Greeks were in charge and the Greeks were destroying the Israelites. That's what you read about in the book of Maccabees. But what do they do with that? Oh, that's an apocryphal. That's a hit. That we, don't, we don't agree with that. So we, they hide that book. So they did the same thing between the Old Testament and the New Testament. They did exactly the same thing. They just hid their actions. So they did the same thing for the last 2,000 years, for their revived Roman Empire. So for the last couple thousand years or whatever, they just hid all that. Oh, we, don't, we don't accept any of those books either. We don't accept any of those things that have been happening for the last 2,000 years. That has nothing to do with prophecy. So just like they say there's a 400 years of silence in the Old Testament and New Testament, now they're trying to say there's a 2,000-year you know, time of, of, you know, of silence from the time of Yahawashai until his second coming. But see, this is what happens when you're the one doing all the dirt, but you also get the opportunity to hide all of it. Right here, this is Deuteronomy 28, verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. Right? The Herophim Targum translates it, the word of the Lord shall bring thee back again. He that is who conducted them out of Egypt in a glorious cloud would punish them for their foul offenses against him by bringing them again into bondage there. Now, it was continue. This was first fulfilled after the desolation made by Titus, when there was, as I observed before verse 62, above 90,000 carried captive, and many of them transported into Egypt, as Josephus relates in the conclusion of the 16th chapter of the seventh book concerning the war of the Jews. And here, um, Manasseh ben Israel has a very pertent, pertinent uh, observation that Vespasian transported them into many and various regions. Okay? But Egypt is only one, is only, name, only here named. The more to reproach the Jews, as if he had said, ye shall be carried into the land as captives out of which you came in a triumphant manner. So, you, you know, and that's the whole thing you're going to, you got brought out of your captivity in a triumphant manner, but you're going to go back into captivity. That's like another way of breaking it down, which is exactly what happened. So it doesn't matter how they, how they try to break it down. Just look at history. Just look at how it worked out. Our people were, the Israelites were taken back into captivity. They were shipped all over the world. That's how you know who is who. Okay? Now it says, uh, let's see here. Out of which you came in triumphant manner, okay? Which may incline one to think that he was of the same mind with our Dr. Jackson, who observing how cruelly they were used here in England. See, they're, they're talking about, this is going on for a long time. It wasn't just a, you go, you go back to Egypt. These, these people were taken all over the place, even in England. 
and they were treated horribly. They know what these people look like. They know who they're referring to. They were taken captive into all these different lands, not given, you know, any rights, three fifths of a person, not even treated like a human being, worked to death, taken advantage of. We know who those people are. Okay. So again, and, and they're also aware that these, um, that these curses are going to be going on for a very long time. This uh, commentary was written in the 1700s. So they're talking about how this stuff has been going on all the way up until then. Okay, so again, who observing how cruelly they were used here in England and many other countries. Concludes that this island and every place of Europe where in their condition of life have been more hard and burdensome than their forefathers was in Egypt. Now that's how you can tell. Because, you know, they're all of the work and all of the ways that they were treated, their condition of life was more burdensome, was worse than their time of Egypt. Okay. Maybe said uh, to be that Egypt into which God threatens here to bring them okay, in ships. And indeed, we do not read of their being carried into Egypt after Vespasian's time, though it is set down here as a punishment to come upon them after a long train of other misery. See, this is the whole thing with the whole the curses. It's a long train of miser, m miseries. It's not just it just happens one time and, and, and then it's all done. This is going on for a very long time. And we know that it also started, it went on when the last 400 years from 1619 to 2019. The 400 years are from Genesis 15 and 13. That was all part of it. That's all part of the fulfillment of the curses. Okay, so again, and indeed, we do not read of their being carried into Egypt after Vespasian's time, though it is set down here as a punishment to come upon them after a long train of other miseries. And we know that they were brought in ships over here to the Americas. They were brought in ships from Spain, from Portugal to Africa. That's how you get so many Negroes, supposedly so-called Negroes in Africa. See, they always wanted to say like, oh, after 70 AD, they just, they, they all walked over here to West Africa. Well, maybe some of them did, but they were also sent there as a punishment through the Inquisition. Part of the punishment in the Inquisition was being sent as slaves into Africa. So again, there's also another fulfillment of Deuteronomy 28, 68. See, they don't want you to realize that the Portuguese and the Spaniards were fulfilling that also with their actions. We'll get into that also, because that's also talked about in the Inquisition books, about how the Portuguese uh, kicked them out and shipped them over into Africa. So you wonder like, how there's all these, Afri you know, all these so-called Negroes and why the Hamites are getting rid of the, um, the Israelites. Well, because they're in their lands and they were kicking them out. They were sent over there by the Portuguese. OK, so let's continue and must relate to their rigorous usage. Let's read that all together, okay? Their rigorous usage. Now, who was used rigorously? Who do they always talk about? Well, the Indians couldn't handle this. So we, you know, they all died off. So let's get the Negroes because they're they're sturdy and they're hardy and they can work hard and they, they, they can handle all this hard work. That was actually what De Las Casas said. The priest of the Spanish. He's like, hey, you know what? Yeah, these Indians, it's too much for them. You know, let's enslave the Negroes because they're they're more built for this. You know, in so many words, that's what he said. Okay, so again, and indeed, we do not read of their being carried into Egypt after Vespasian's time, though it is set down here as a punishment to come upon them after a long train of other miseries and must relate to their rigorous usage. This is, I guess, again, they can give you a breakdown, but then look at history. Who was used rigorously? Who were they? Every time they wanted to build up their nation, who do they go and get? Who do they bring to those lands in order to, you know, build up their lands? That's that you know who the Israelites are. Let's continue. Which I have observed in many countries in several ages down to these later times. See, they, they know that this has been going on for hundreds of years. They know who this is. 
And this guy right here, like I said, he's one of these Christians or Protestants or whatever, you know, and they're going after the Catholic Church. But look, you guys are just as guilty. You knew the truth and you kept it silent. Yeah, you put it in a commentary, but that's about it. But then, you know, you'll veer off, you'll go exit stage left and say that, oh, it wasn't these Negroes that we had enslaved and have been on slave ships that fit all of these, you know, this criteria of all the curses. It's just other group that hasn't gone through any of the same stuff that these people have. Who, who's gone, who's been used rigorously? Who's been, every time you got it, you guys want to build up your country, who do you go and get to do all the labor? This is what this is talking about. And again, which I have observed in many countries in several ages down to these later times. So they're aware, well aware. Okay, the Hierophant pra, Talmud, it must be observed. Okay, mentions another bringing into Egypt, literally understood. In the, uh, I don't know if that is, Machata, uh, before named upon verse 59 where they say that as God forbade them three times to return into Egypt, which they there sat down, so they were forced thither three times for their transgressions against God. First, in the days of Sennacherib, king of Assyria. Secondly, in the time of Johan, Johanan, the son of Kareb. Okay, and lastly, in the time of the emperor Trajan. Again, now they're talking about these, uh, these Europeans again. Okay, but this I look upon as a mistake, for Trajan rather killed all those whom he found there than carried them thither, as I noted before, okay, with ships, which seems to put them uh, in mind how different their condition was now become from what it was when they came out of Egypt without any ships, for the sea gave them a passage through it by uh, being made dry land. They're being carried also thither by ships, made their condition the more deplorable, because there was no means of escaping out of them, as there might have been if they had gone by land. Now, there's more. Um, we're going to jump into this uh, quite a bit more, but just showing you. But this here is, like I said, it's just more facts that these people are well aware that the Israelites were under cursing for a very long time. They were going to be able to get... You know, the, their hand on the Israelites, all 12 tribes, and they were going to be able to trod them down. And they were going to be able to use them to build up their nation. But now that they know that that time is up, now they want to switch everything from the blessing and the cursing because they don't want the curses. So, the, the, so then the church, the Constantine Christian church, is about to be raptured up out of here. But it's like, how do you come to that conclusion? like I did on the, my TikTok videos, you know, today. When exactly were prophecies switched to be all about the Gentiles and the other nations? When did the, you know, when were the prophecies taken, you know, not, all of a sudden not about Israel anymore, true Israel, but about everything about the Gentiles? So that's what happens if you guys try to use our prophecies for your, you know, your life and the way you want to see things, just like that pastor now. Oh, man, we're, we're being persecuted. They said it's going to be like this in the last days. Look, I try to tell them about Jesus Christ, and, and they laugh at me. That must mean we're in the last days, and I'm going to get rashed out here because I'm standing up boldly for Christ. But these people are laughing at me and not taking me seriously. So, you know, that's persecution for me. So Jesus is going to come and get me and, and rapture me away. Like, that's, that's, all you, that's all you have to worry about? Someone not agreeing with you? Someone not accepting you is that, is that I'm sure it's probably really difficult because you're used to everyone just accepting everything that you say, hook, line, and sinker. But now, that's not the case. And now, to you, that feels like I guess that feels like persecution. Okay, but see, the Bible is very specific as to the kind of persecution his people are going to go through. And it wasn't that it happened way in the past. Like they always want to say, "All oh, this happened in the Book of Exodus in the time of you know." In the time of when they were going to the Egyptians with, with Joseph and, and the brothers. And that was the 400 years. And we already know that was 430 years of sojourning from the time of Abraham all the way down. They were not enslaved for 400 years at that time. That's why these people here are talking about, they're not talking about something that happened in the past. They're looking at what was happening with the Catholic Church, Christian churches as well, because they enslaved the people as well. 
They are not saying that all this stuff happened in, you know, in the book of Exodus because they are well aware that the Israelites were not enslaved for 400 years. So they know, okay, the ones who read the Bible and do, do this serious study and they all know that that was not fulfilled during the time of Exodus. The Israelites were not enslaved for 400 years. They knew this was a, for, a, a future prophecy. And they were going to get an opportunity to put the Israelites down and they were going to get an opportunity to rule and reign for 400 years. But now that we've come to the end of that, they don't want what's coming. That's why they're pushing this whole rapture doctrine, which is not going to happen. Because all of these prophecies in the Bible deal with the Israelites. All of them. So you trying to take our prophecies and apply them to your life and the things that happen in your life is totally wrong. And it's a misuse of scripture. The prophecies revolve around one particular family. If you don't believe me, do the research yourself. The prophecies revolve around the Israelites. And the prophecies did not stop in 70 AD. They did not stop at the end of the book of Revelation. There's many other books that go into even more depth. And it's up to you to find them and read them and, you know, get an understanding with them and then connect them to history. All praise is most high. Yahweh. Acknowledgement to the earthly mother. Who was wisdom? Who was the Holy Spirit? Acknowledge it. Yahweh Shai. Shalom.